It's a bit windy out here. We've got some gusts going on, but I'm going to do a real quick one. I just got through with a periscope, and I'm going to finish up this battery uh, so I can put this on YouTube and let y'all see it up close in flight. So let me angle up the camera a little bit, and we'll put it in the air. Tractor mode, and you're going forward real fast. Ooh, it's a big gust. Um, if you're in uh, forward mode, going real fast, and you try to stop real quick, it's probably not going to work out very well for you. Wind change direction. So uh, this is how they do their yaw. Um, they did it pretty, I mean, I, I think it's pretty neat myself. So instead of uh, turning the rear prop, which is what most tricopters do, they actually angle the motors. And the reason it doesn't go very fast and backwards is because that's all it has for reverse. <laughs> that little bit of movement right there so unless it drops the tail a little bit I don't think you're gonna stop on a dime on this thing um, forward motion however and you got pretty good amount there not to mention it does still have a tail rotor so it can use that as well um, the balance point is just behind those motors so the rear prop really don't have to do a whole lot of work. Most of the work is done by those front ones, what it looks like anyway. Um, if I had a calm day, I would actually test it out by pushing down on the tail and seeing how exactly it tries to counteract it. But it's quite windy out here and it's actually pretty chilly, so that is about all we're gonna do right now. Um, I got 23 seconds left on the clock. Cause I've got uh, I've got the weak batteries, so there you go. You can see it, 23. Um, that is the convergence VTOL, which is vertical takeoff and landing uh, from Horizon. And um, I'll have to tell you, if you want to get in the planes and you're more of a you know quadcopter flyer. This is an excellent opportunity right here because this thing works great in both modes. Um, if you have a small yard so you can't really take off with a regular plane, well, this has VTOL capability. Uh, there ain't nothing out there that can actually... Well, there's a few toy planes that can do it, but this is a little beyond a toy, so... Um, it is like 250, 260 bucks, and this is the bind and fly, so you have to have your own radio. But you can get a, a DX6E or I for what, under 100 bucks. Good grief, it's getting chilly out here. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's actually pretty, pretty robust too um, it is not all foam like some people have said 
The nacelles are some kind of plastic. It has plastic on every part that has a possibility of touching the ground, like the tips of the wings. The underbelly has a large section under it that's protecting the electronics. It's a uh, hard plastic. Uh, there's a little hard plastic covering over where the uh, video transmitter goes, which I do have installed. And the back right there behind the rear prop actually has a plastic guard as well. So it is reinforced in key locations and I am pretty sure that there was a uh, there's actually wood enforcement in there too as well for the uh, radio tray and that sort of stuff. So this is not a fragile plane by any means. Uh, and it is actually handling this wind pretty good, which I'm even having difficulty right now because my fingers are starting to get numb. So I'm going to bid y'all adieu and Keep your props out of the dirt and uh, the wind in your hair and I'll see y'all later.